Hello Blender friends and welcome to another Super 3 Boy Blender tutorial. In this tutorial we will be going over the very basics of the Blender game engine and logic breaks in Blender 2.5. A long while ago we had a vote that you guys would be most interested in an RPG based game. So in this tutorial and the tutorials that follow it we are going to be going over the various parts of the Blender game engine focusing mostly on the parts that will help us make an RPG game. So, the game engine tutorials will be split up into a separate series from the rest of the Blender 2.5 tutorials that I'm currently remaking from the old 2.4x tutorials. Now, those of you that have been watching my tutorials for a while may notice that I'm doing things a bit differently. I used to do the, my tutorials in a small window as large as the YouTube player, but per suggestion of a user on the forum, I made it much larger so hopefully you can see everything just fine. Along with the higher resolution, I have also tried to be a little bit more organized so you won't hear me rambling or pausing as much during the tutorials as before. Uh, also, I have recently updated Nistic so you can find the original and high quality video files as well as the finish.blend files for any of the 2.5 tutorials. Uh, I also converted them so there are versions for you to view on your iPod or your iPhone, your Android, or any other mobile device that you have. So hopefully uh, this will be helpful to a few people and you can watch the tutorials on the go. Uh, like I said, the these tutorials uh, are available on Nistic, or you can just go to the link in the video description uh, to download those video files and blend files. As we get started on our tutorial for today, you may notice that the splash screen may look a bit different. Uh, Blender 2.56 came out a few weeks ago, so if you haven't already upgraded, you should. Uh, the awesome Blender developers fix over 400 bucks, so there's much less of a chance that Blender will crash and burn while you're trying to follow along with this tutorial. So to the people who usually comment on this, uh, the Blender game engine tutorials will be significantly longer than usual and probably more wordy at the beginning as I kind of attempt to explain everything. Uh, the Blender game tutorial series serves two purposes. One, to make a kind of basic RPG game. Uh, and two, to really give you the tools to make your uh, own game. So we have to go a little bit deeper uh, into Blender and thus a little bit wordier. Uh, so if you don't like it, go away. Serious Blender friends only. So we are going to be using our default cube today. Uh, we need to be in top view to start off, so click on the splash screen, get rid of it, view, top, uh, hit the space bar to search for add plane, so I'm just going to type in plane, add plane, and we're going to have our cube rest on this plane, so we're going to need to make the plane a little bit bigger, so I'm just going to hit S. You can use your judgment on this, but I'm just going to hit 5, that seems good enough. Right now, the plane is intersecting our cube, so we want to go into view, front view, numpad 1, and change the perspective uh, so we can see this a little bit better. We're going to hit the G key and the Z key and just move our plane just below our cube. So hit alt, left mouse button, we can see our handiwork. So basically, simple as that, we've set up the scene for the rest of the tutorial. Now there are two ways to make the functional part of a game using the Blender game engine. By functional, I mean the part that makes your main character object move around, shoot, jump, score, points, etc. The first is something called logic breaks, uh, which we'll be going over in this tutorial. The second is using the programming language Python, which Blender is kind of built on. Uh, in this tutorial, we're going to be using the logic brick method to add some basic actions and functionality to your queue, making it move left, right, up, down, uh, when we press the correct keys. 
Uh, later on, we'll probably do some Python, but we'll see how that goes. Uh, logic bricks may be a little confusing at first, so I'm just going to read off what the official Blender wiki has to say about it. So I'm quoting and paraphrasing. Uh, game logic is what causes anything to happen in a game. It is designed to provide a powerful tool to set up the logic through a graphical interface. So basically, uh, a bunch of buttons where we can make our game work. Uh, the blocks or bricks represent pre-programmed functions which can be tweaked and combined to create a game slash application. Uh, the system is broken up to three parts. Now this is important. Sensors, controllers, and actuators. Sensors sense when things happen such as a collision, a key press, mouse movements. Sensors are linked to controllers, which compare them and activate actuators. So more simply, uh, a sensor is when we hit like an arrow key, uh, which goes to the, the controller, which actuates the, activates the actuator, which actually does something. So we press the up arrow key, the sensor picks it up, goes to the controller, and it activates the actuator, which moves the cube uh, a little bit forward. Now, in Blender 2.4x, uh, we would simply go into one of these uh, tabs to uh, do our game logic. Um, they, were, they were down here at the bottom in 2.4x, but uh, as you can see, the tabs kind of moved up here in Blender 2.5. Well, for game uh, logic and logic bricks, uh, it's not really the best to do it in the default 3D view that we have here. So we have to go up here just to the top of Blender, click on this little icon next to the thing that says default, and you go down and click on this option here that says game logic. And so this will rearrange everything uh, here so we get a, a good view of what's going on, and we have our little view right here where we have our sensors, controllers, and actuators that I was just talking about. And this is where we're actually going to set up the logic bricks to make our game work. So before we add our logic bricks to our game, we have to change one very important setting. Right now, if you look up here, it's set to Blender Render. We have to click that and change that to Blender Game, which will open up some settings uh, that we need to change. So I'm going to resize this tab right here so we can better see what we're doing. Alt, left mouse button to rotate, and I'm going to select the cube. So I'm going to go over here to our physics option and quickly change this from a static type to a rigid body. Uh, so this will allow it to act to react to gravity uh, and stuff of that nature. So I'm going to hit the G key, the Z key to kind of demonstrate this. And then I'm going to left mouse click. I just moved it up uh, a little bit. I'm going to hit the P key to start the Blender game engine. And as you can see, it falls onto the plane. So I hit escape and we're out of the Blender game engine. So let's go ahead and add some uh, logic to this. So we want to add a sensor here and add a keyboard sensor. We want to add a controller, just make this an AND. And we want to add an actuator and we'll make this motion. So we're going to scroll down a little bit here so we can see what we're doing. And what we need to do is we just need to quickly uh, link these together. The sensors to the controller, as you can see there's a little dot uh, on either side. And basically we just pull what looks like a little string from one to the other and we connect these. Then we need to see where it says key right here. Uh, there's a little blank box here. What you need to do is click on it uh, it gives you a press any key, and I'm just going to hit the up arrow key on my keyboard. So, uh, from that, we can actually collapse this since we're not going to look at that again by hitting that little arrow right there. 
And there's also another error right here. We can collapse the and and make it a little smaller. And over here, we need to uh, edit some of these settings. So we want it to go forward. So we want to set our location settings. Uh, which is, this is the, I believe this is the X, Y, and the Z axis. Uh, so it'll move it uh, however many uh, units you set here in the X setting every time you hit the up arrow key or hold it. So I'm just going to select point 0.1 and same thing X, Y, and Z for the rotation settings and we'll uh, do that for our left and right arrow keys so it'll rotate uh, when we hit those keys. So let's go ahead and collapse that and actually test this. Hit the P key. If I hit the up arrow key, it should move slightly forward. So we hit the escape key, go back, and we're going to add the left and right arrow keys. So we're going to hit add sensor, keyboard, and then we're going to add a motion actuator link them together. It's a fairly simple uh, but repetitive process. Key, hit the left arrow, collapse it just to make it smaller, and we're going to rotate it on uh, the up and down axis, so the Z axis, so the last option here, and we'll just do it about one degree uh, per uh, key press. So we'll collapse that. Hopefully that should go in the right direction. If not, we can just change it quickly back. So we're gonna add the right mouse button now, or the uh, right arrow key, excuse me. Connect these two. Right arrow. And we wanna go in the opposite direction. So let's test this. It's just trial and error. Let's hit the P key, it goes up, hit the left arrow, it rotates, right arrow, it rotates to the right, and I can hit the up arrow to move it forward, and just basically making my little cube character uh, go in circles around the plane area. So we can add one more thing to this. Complete it, collapse that, collapse that, and let's add uh, something for the down arrow so you can move backwards as well. So we're going to add another and actuator that's motion. We're going to connect these together. Key, down arrow, collapse, collapse those. And we want it going backwards, so negative 0.1 should do. Peaky. You can move backwards, forward, right, left. And oh no, he fell off the plane. That's horrible. All right. So that's basically uh, it for this tutorial. It was fairly simple, but we learned what we're going to be doing in this tutorial series. Uh, we learned a little bit about logic bricks and how they operate, and we went hands-on and added some logic bricks to our cube to make it move around. So if you have any specific questions on the Blender game engine, don't hesitate to visit forum.nistic.com for help. We have several resin experts that will be happy to help you with any specific questions that you may have. Also, we will be having a Blender Engine contest, Blender Game Engine contest, next month, February 2011, as part of our monthly Blender contest that we have on the forum. Uh, so, if you're looking for a place to get some good practice with the Blender Game Engine uh, and what you learned from the tutorials, this is a perfect place to apply it. The contest will focus on just developing a small mini game in Blender. So, follow the link in the video description if you're interested and want to get more information. The prize is any one thing that you want in the Blender store. Well, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial, and uh, I hope you head on to the next one where we will be adding 
uh, another logic bird is adding the basic option for our cube to jump and we will also be texturing uh, our cube character right now he's kind of drab and the uh, environment around it. So hope to see you guys in the next tutorial and happy blendering.